Mm -hmm. Like Bernie said, I'm going to hit that thing. If it's yeah. online, Tom, is it going to be this morning as a doctor's going. appointment? <laughs> so. Oh, okay. yeah. The light we got from the junkyard was better than the one I've had. It fade out okay. I don't know how that's a benefit, but anyway. Because <laughs> you talk a lot. Is the candle. Hey, how you doing? The candle this week, is that going to be the love candle? Uh, it's Joy. Oh. Uh, no. Good morning. No, we have Joy. I think Joy was last week. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, yes, it's love. Good. <laughs> I got the, it's always good, right? Well, I've got the thing in, in Monroe in the Sunday, and I wanted to be <laughs> make sure I was on the right page. All right, you may. Well, the yeah, so Luke, we'll start in Matthew, and then we'll go Luke. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. Just, got just don't sound great. A horse. That's a kind of frog. So did you take possession of the beer? I, I called Rex Jr. And I think he stopped and got him. I'm going to forget to slide the phone over at 5 till. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> there are responsibilities yes. for that position. <laughs> you chose the chair. I can do this. <laughs> yeah. That's the sign in over here, Jeff. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Yeah. Hand it back to Diane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm doing much better. Obviously. It's a good sign. No. I wouldn't presume to do that. <laughs> I'm so close to that. Oh, I thought he would be a nice guy. But somebody had the audacity to, well, maybe you should have picked a different route. It's like, what route do you propose? I mean, I live in Monroe. I'm trying to live in Monroe. But what, you know, to avoid deer out there, what oh. route do you want me to go? I know. No, you, you, Last Lake winter, Erie. I counted 27 in the backyard. Lake yeah. Erie is the best route to avoid deer. <laughs> but you got to have a boat. How I, am I going to go home? you got, you got to have a boat. <laughs> am I living at Russian? <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to get a boat. <laughs> Live in a cabin cruiser if you want to avoid deer in Ohio. <laughs> say we have deer in our yards. 47 in your backyard? 20, and that's not the back 40. That was the backyard. Well, I took out three this year. I did my duty. <laughs> did you have a license for all of them? <laughs> well, my daughter, a driver's <laughs> license. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all they give you. Yeah, my daughter nine, lived ten, in uh, Cleveland, so south of 480. At the, um, Fairview, no, she's not there. Oh, they didn't feel your candy I forget where she was, but anyway. They there's had one in uh, there. beer in their yard all the time, and my yeah, son lives in Fairview <laughs> Park, and there's only certain things he can grow because they eat everything. We want, they grow up against the trees. And <laughs> Did everybody get a chance to sign in? in? On, curled up on their front porch. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> I'll do the best I can. <laughs> Rough. Um, that's right. <laughs> You'll be better than Tom no matter what. So <laughs> You'll <me> do this. <laughs> Lean up. Tom, give me the phone. You're giving me blocking. <laughs> I need that amount of guidance. So <laughs> I'm not complaining. All right. Let's have a prayer. God, remind us that you have given us your word so that we might discover more about who you are and about who we can be in you. And so we ask and thank you at the same time that you join us at this table, that you in, infuse our hearts and minds with the truth and the grace of your gospel. Help us to recognize what it is that you want us to recognize in who you are this day. We thank you for the privilege of gathering and for those who join us online. Amen. I said it, I typed it in, but Tom is not with us this morning and and as always, that but that what that will mean is that I won't have we won't have as many. Um,
comments. I might not respond as quickly to what's on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook and you post something, don't feel left out if I don't recognize it right away. I will keep an eye on it, um, especially looking diligently for comments from the amazing Terry Simpson. Um, <laughs> I don't know that we'd make it through the Bible study without that. So um, such a blessing. So this morning we have two actual two texts um, from yesterday. One is the text in Luke, which as often considered or called the Annunciation to Mary, um, and the other is a text in Matthew that starts with uh, um, instructions given to Joseph. Um, I'd like to look at um, I'd like to look at at Luke first, and and to make a make a comment that is, I I think it, it at least was an an eye opener for me. Um, <clears throat> You know, as I, I had, I grew up in a Protestant tradition, um, and at the same time, as a pastor, I have spent quite a bit of time at a Benedictine monastery, and it and it is an actually a Cistercian monastery. And what that means, um, in in regular language, is that they are focused on the person of Mary, as as the beloved. And as a as a, a Protestant growing up, um, didn't hear much about Mary. But what I did hear, I, I'm sad to say, was was not positive. It it was suggesting that that um, Catholic churches in general, Roman Catholic churches and Eastern Orthodox churches that venerated Mary, <clears throat> were worshiping idols and all kinds of other stuff. Um, and and so it, and part of that came from the the. After the Protestant Reformation, part of what happened is when um, when Luther stepped in and said, essentially, why can't people read Scripture in their own language? And and of course, it it happened at a time when s Scripture was translated from uh, or an oral tradition, which which was typically Aramaic and and Greek, but it eventually gets written down and transmitted. Well, in, in, in the era around the Protestant Reformation, um, the ability to read and write was a relatively novel thing. And, and so it, I, the first thing I would say is as, as Protestants in the West, recognizing that what, what the church was doing at that time wasn't as heavy handed as perhaps it was represented to us as being, there was a need to have scripture translated and, and interpreted for uh, the everyday person. And so part of that included um, the painting and the, and the presentation of icons. Icons are not the same as idols. Um, icons aren't to be worshiped. They're teaching instruments. And so where you see a statue of Mary holding the Christ child, um, veneration is different than worship. Um, and and, and the, poor, the, the piece of all of it is as I was told by a, a, the abbot of the monastery, <clears throat> scripture sa says, Mary says, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. And and that is that is kind of the heart behind the veneration of Mary in in, in Catholic um, or I guess religious orders and in, in the Catholic Church is the notion that scripturally we are to recognize that Mary is, is called blessed as the mother of our Lord. Um, and so I, I say that because I came into, um, a, as an adult, I came into a Bible study and faith with a bias, not, not really kind of dismissing the value of Mary as a figure um, in, in scripture. Um, and so we'll start with Mary this morning because it makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> justifies my uh, self-consciousness about that. Um, so I'll start, I'll read, uh, starting in verse 26. Now we had, for yesterday, we cut off at um, 38, partially because we can only put so much in there, but um, we might take a look today, if we have a minute, at Mary's song, which would start in 46 and go through 56. But start with the Annunciation, which we looked at yesterday. I'm reading from the NIV 1984 uh, version, if you, if anybody wonders. In the sixth month, this is verse 26 of Luke chapter, chapter 1. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin, pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. 
The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the Spirit and the power of the Most High God, uh, the power of the Most High, sorry, will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. And then verse 38, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered, may it be to me as you have said. And the angel left her. So that's through verse 38. Before I get started, comments, questions, observations? Having heard this. The message says that the angel said, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and and do you, does everyone think that perhaps Gabriel uh, had a bit of a smirk on his ma face, thinking, no, yeah, no, 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 no one's ever afraid when you hear God has a surprise for you. <laughs> God, you know, it's like God gets down on his hands and knees and looks you in the eye and says, I have a special mission for you today. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> It's yeah. everything yeah. is going to fall apart any minute now. It's hard it's entertaining to... out of your Bible. Huh? <laughs> right. Right. We don't like your version. <laughs> yeah, I, what, Jane, for her to read with this was quite a thing because lawfully she should have been stoned to death. Yeah. Well, and that's a good point. You know, we talk a lot about it, but what I didn't mention yesterday is I think it's worth um, considering. At this point, what she's aware of is that she's going to be pregnant out of wedlock. And and she's probably wise enough to figure out that everybody else hasn't heard what yes, what she has yeah. heard. And so we you know we we say um, Mary was afraid. Well, of course she would be afraid. For, I think anytime Gabriel, I mean it was the angel Gabriel. So we hear from the the, the spirit guides us and the holy spirit um, take a step a step away from the specifics of the text. Angels are messengers from God. They're distinct beings. They're not the Holy Spirit. The angels have, to the best of our ability to understand, they have some degree of character and, and um, definition. A, Gabriel obviously has a name, and he's named, other angels are named. So, so this is not the Holy Spirit moving in Mary. This is a, a conversation, an encounter, whether she saw it with her eyes, saw it in her heart, none of that matters. It, what matters is, um, this is a different encounter than, say, the Apostle Paul on, on the road to Damascus. His encounter is with Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus knocks him off the horse, and, and his response is different. I don't know that we could say typically the responses to angels are different than responses to God leading. But if you look, say, at Moses with the burning bush, there is always a, deg a degree of apprehension when we encounter when we encounter when we encounter the full truth because because the thing that we have to recognize about Gabriel is an angel messenger from God mm -hmm. is only going to speak the full truth mm -hmm. they're not going to dance around the issue they're not going to couch it in you know kind euphemisms the angel is going to speak exactly what God said and and as human beings we are we're not comfortable with the full truth it, it makes us uncomfortable. Add to that the awareness that Mary would have had. A simple woman pregnant out of wedlock, is her life is instantly in danger. At the very least, if they chose not to stone her, and, and we have fairly decent evidence, it, it would be, looking back at it now, probably would have been unlikely that they would have stoned Mary at that time. The, the law was, 
they were challenged to obey, to obey, to observe all aspects of it. Uh, probably Mary wouldn't be the only person that was uh, pregnant out of wedlock around that time. So, so maybe she wouldn't have realistically fainted, uh, faced being stoned. But that doesn't change the fact that as an observant Jew, which she clearly was, um, it, it would be like, how do I do this? How can I be pregnant out of wedlock and, and obedient to your law? Um, and she had been betrothed. That was married. You were married. You had the feast a year later, but you were actually married. And if you were found to be pregnant, it was um, the feast okay. didn't happen, but you were still... That, that was not uncommon, but in the law, if she was pregnant, Joseph could divorce her and let her marry the man who was the father. That would keep her from being stoned or in any kind of trouble. So because she was betrothed, she wasn't actually out of wedlock. So, you know, the, the rules and the laws at that time were, as you said, were a little different than we see straightforward. So she, like, when, when, when Abraham was told, go kill your son, you know, it's like yeah. the same thing. He went to kill his son. He had the faith that whatever God said would make it right. Yeah. Mary had the same faith. This is screwed up, but it's a little late. But God will make it right. I think it was her mm -hmm. faith that sustained her. Absolutely. And, and I think it's also interesting to recognize that, that nonetheless, Joseph still had to be a part of that equation. Yes. Well, it, he had to be the leader <coughs> for the legality of the mm -hmm. throne, although he, wasn't, he couldn't be... Um, uh, Jesus couldn't be the son of Joseph right. legally because Jeconiah had a blood curse, and so nothing from the line of Solomon or Jeconiah could become king or even an offspring. So he had to be, for the legal end of it for Judaism, he had to be Jesus' father, which he could be the moment he named him. That was a legal adoption. But the mother had to be from the line that wasn't Jeconiah, Jeff but Solomon. So this, all this, it all had to fall together to make it right. Yeah. It's not not a not a simple equation, <laughs> and and I think that the that that the value in all of that is this can't be an accident. <laughs> this can't this this is not just something. This is not people looking at an event in history and saying, "Hey, we need an icon. We need someone to call savior. We need people to be a leading couple. We need a story to build our faith around." Let's pick Mary and Joseph. You know, let let's use them because they're observant, and, and let's let's exploit that story. Um, there's no way that that um, this would have happened anywhere or any other time, and so it has to be. Um, it, it it is it's interesting how God has, you know, we we ask sometimes for historical verification of, of all of these things, and it can be found, but but the truth is. This is an un. This is a very uncommon experience, and it's not just oh they they picked somebody. It happened all the time. Um, it, 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 the, the two, you have two genealogies which lead you back one to Adam, one to David. But those tell you exactly that this plan has been going on since God breathed breath into Adam. You know, the, the exact people even. Yeah, mm. yeah. It it, it is a. And, and that's one of the things that's beautiful about scripture is that it really is an organic unity from the beginning to the end. And and folks that say that it was written by human beings, I have to tell you, there isn't an author brilliant enough to tie this many pieces together across this many cultures to be historically uh, relatively accurate. But it's, its goal is not to be a history text. Its goal is to be a, to, to show us a, a narrative that the narrative of our salvation history. Our salvation was planned and provided for at the beginning of this whole thing. Now, I suspect, had we not sinned, God would have been happy to come up with a plan B that we didn't need to be saved. However, we, from the beginning, there was a plan for our redemption. There was provision for our redemption. And surprisingly, God continued to let us have a part in that. I think one of the things that is important for us as human beings, as, as um, specifically as humans, is agency. We are, we are given a will. We, we have the ability to choose. And if you can't choose wrongly, it's not a meaningful ability to choose. You know, it's not, there's no virtue in a pine tree growing another pine tree. That's just what happens. You know, if I, 
if I live in a, a four by six cell and, and get out one hour, one hour a day for exercise and take a shower and have something to eat, the fact that I'm not breaking any laws isn't really a big virtue. <laughs> I don't have the chance to break any laws. Um, and, and so all of the involvement of people in these, in these events re are God's recognizing that we, that we have ownership and agency in what happens and what goes on around us. Thank you, Diana. Does anybody else have a comment? It's interesting that uh, the angel makes sure to mention about Elizabeth. For one reason, I'm sure to say that I love verse 37, nothing is impossible with God to give her like some assurance. Some other stuff's going on in yeah. her family. But then in like verse 56, she stayed with Elizabeth for three months. Yeah. And in mm -hmm. verse 39, it says she got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country to go to Elizabeth. I've always thought that was a blessing she had Elizabeth and uh -huh. they could kind of share that together. Yeah. Elizabeth would have been the one that would understand the situation too, that it would be possible. This would be, if it yeah. happened to her, it could yeah. happen to, sure. to Mary. <laughs> and there wouldn't have been probably anybody else that would. Right. Especially Mary's age. You know how teenagers are. And, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Have been through the ages, I guess. And and the and the the involvement of the angelic announcement, you know, it's mm -hmm. not. Although Elizabeth's child is an immaculate conception, it is a miracle mm -hmm. in the sense that it was mm -hmm. a gift given to Elizabeth, and mm -hmm. and uh, um, what's his name, Zechariah? <laughs> <laughs> what's his name? What's his name? Um, what's his name? Um, yeah. That 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 they have had, they've had these this revealing intervention of God's part um, and on and and Mary's not left alone I think that's kind of what you're saying Lynn is that she had a yeah. she had a, a compassionate when I first read it like years ago I actually it made me think of people I've known who kind of hid uh -huh. during their pregnancy like they were in college or something and they just really didn't want the world they kind of went yeah. up to an answer that was an old-fashioned yeah. sort of thing to do and uh, it might be way more than that. Like that much. She was only there three months. She still had the other six months to. Yeah. Well, even it, even uh, back in the 1800s and early 1900s, uh, women didn't go out in public if they were pregnant, and if they were, they disguised it very well. Yeah. Uh, oh, you mean even if they were married? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it was just you just didn't. Mm -hmm. Of course, she dressed up to go do. shopping too, but that's uh, yeah. The Amish still do. They they don't go out. In oh, fact, yeah. they hold up weddings if the aunt's pregnant or something. They wait until the oh baby. yeah, and they don't announce their pregnancies either. They just it all happens. of a sudden there's a baby. All of a sudden there's a baby. <laughs> Guess what happened? Quiet though. That's interesting. Yeah. I Another see. miracle. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I think too. If you if you um, recognizing what Mary is going to be up against. It, it, this is a, both both Mary and Elizabeth are going to be faced with a a a prominent and and unprecedented role in the salvation history of God's people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, you know, John. Okay, I don't know which is easier: your son as a teenager and a young man is a, a normal guy picking up the carpentry business where his cousin is out eating bugs and wandering the desert saying crazy <laughs> things. I mean, it's you know. Yeah. The, the both of them as parents are really are realistically facing a challenging uh, childhood for their for their offspring and and, and they'll both lose their sons which is yeah. tragic at very yeah. young ages and, and at first, <laughs> verse thirty five the angel sort of gives them some encouragement the Holy Spirit will come upon you the power of the highest hover over you yeah. Just give them yeah. some reassurance that you know they're not really in this alone. The power of the Most High is going to hover over her. Yeah. Well, I thought how the pregnancy would happen was that. Yeah, way. Well, I, see, I take that as to mean the whole. Yes, it doesn't end just there. Yeah, I like that. I like that translation that the power will hover yeah, over you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, a force field. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to make is going to cause the pregnancy, but it seems seems to me that that would be reassuring for your whole. Everything's going to happen. The power of the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy yeah. Spirit hovered over the waters too. Right. Yes. We we know that the Holy Spirit can do that. Can hang out and 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 change. The, and the you know the the Holy Spirit 
can have a, a, a global impact without everybody's awareness. The spirit hovering over Mary, similar to Pentecost. There were, there were observers at Pentecost that, that weren't buying into it because they were making fun of it, but were aware that something was happening. And so, um, Mary Jo, I like that, that um, idea of the spirit hovering around Mary through this time. That, and I, and I, I have to believe that there was, that in Mary's heart, there were ongoing revelations that um, how God was working in and through her life. You know, we talk a lot about the, the little things that come together, you know, mm-hmm. like say, for instance, on Sunday, oftentimes those of us involved in the, in the um, nine o'clock service say, wow, all those pieces came together really well and we didn't plan it that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and recognizing that God has, has orchestrated and brought together some pieces. Um, and and I'm, I'm sure that Mary had many of those experiences of, wow, God's working this out. God's continuing to work this out, that idea of hovering. Um, you even think of your own <clears throat> ancestors, how they got together uh, from different countries in Europe, came over to this country and they met. And uh, I, I'm amazed at my, my own family, how they got together and the unusual circumstances and why in the world did they ever pick each other, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> but uh, then here we are. Yeah. Here we and are. Here we are. Yeah. The reason I'm pointing is kind of interesting that they hover there. I just I thought that was amazing. And it says that the spirit of the holy will over you like a shadow be. So think about walking with you in the sunlight and the shadow, you don't, the shadow comes over you like a cloud or something, that feeling of that shadow coming over you. Hmm. It's, it's, it's like know that moment yeah especially in an arid environment where you know the the idea of a shadow in nazareth (laughs) (laughs) heading off into egypt (laughs) yeah i I think she would know when it happened because it's like a shadow coming over you for us today yeah that's like the holy spirit when we accept jesus and Uh when you put it into that perspective we have that same shadow over us and this helps us understand what happens when we accept jesus it all ties together Uh uh-huh yeah and i i i think it's also valuable although not not to drive it too far (laughs) until pentecost the holy spirit doesn't reside typically the holy spirit so so this experience with mary is unique it, exactly. it, you, you the, they would have known that the Holy Spirit works and aware that the Holy Spirit visits, but for the Holy Spirit to show up and hang around is unique, and and that won't happen in other people's lives until until after Pentecost. Um, so so again, that sense that Mary would have of the, the it's the conundrum of being very alone in the sense that you're experiencing something that no one else in the history of the world, past or future, has ever experienced. And that could make you feel very much alone, except that God doesn't leave her alone. You talked about other revelation. It, it, you, know, you, you mentioned the Song of Mary. Yeah. It's obvious there that she knows more than what we are hearing yeah. say here. So, yeah. you know, there's more input for her. Yeah. She, yeah, it's obvious that, the, that she knows more. Yeah, we only know what we're told here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Anyone else? Observations. What touches you about this? We you know, we've we've heard this so many times. Thinking mm-hmm. thinking back to our time in the church, maybe even as kids, um, um, misunderstandings or or uh, images that we had of this this part of the narrative that have changed as adults that we've uh, come into. One thing on this that I, I was reading a commentary about this too, but and I, I mentioned a couple weeks ago when you weren't around. The uh, I have a great respect for the Jewish people. You know, they they've managed to keep their identity through everything they've gone through from mm-hmm. from Abraham on, basically. And the fact that you know you, you say you know God put these people together, just the fact that they realized what their genealogy was after everything they've been through. Yeah, and they, you know, seventy years of exile and everything else, and they still knew exactly who was who. Yeah, and they kept track of mm-hmm. all their genealogy, so they, they knew what it was. Yeah, and, and it wasn't, you know, it, it had to be that way. 
right? There weren't court documents and records that were written down. I think that there's, and that's a great thing to point out that we have mm -hmm. some written documentation of that mm -hmm. genealogy, but around this time, it was known collectively, but it wasn't. It wasn't like they had a central registry where where, where all of these things were recorded. It was an awareness and and um, and the idea of, as you said, Diana, God had this plan mm -hmm. all along, and that and that's part of the reason that or that goes hand in hand with. They know the plan. They they understand this tying this plan together. It's important that Jesus is not just a savior. There are all kinds of, of individuals, and we see we still see it today, that will claim to have all of the answers and all of the gifts and all the blessings and all the solutions for all the problems anybody could ever have. You know, Jesus is not as as a as a young man claiming to have an answer for everybody that's going to solve all their problems, that's not a new thing. I mean, there were snake oil salesmen all along. Yeah. So tying, tying the birth of Christ to the historical truth of God's people and his promise, the prophecies in the Old Testament of a Messiah, it's critical because it's not a Johnny-come-lately. It's a fulfillment of a plan. And, and it's reassuring to know that if God's kept it together among us for that long, yeah. we might just make it. <laughs> Even the things that sound impossible, like he's born in Bethlehem, he comes from Nazareth, and he comes out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. How can that be from one person? Well, <laughs> yeah, right. It worked. <laughs> yeah. Especially yeah. in those days. Yeah, we couldn't imagine. Um, any other? One more thing real quick yeah. on, on that. Uh, Anna, when Anna, you know, a couple weeks ago, again, we talked about that, uh -huh. said in there she was from the tribe of Asher, which was one of the lost tribes that was lost during the during the, the, the exile. But, but they still knew who she was, yeah. even though they were lost. That's a good point. You know, I hadn't really thought about that. They, yeah, they were, they asked, but they, they knew who she was. Yeah. yeah. When, even yeah. in time of... Uh, when the first exile after the 400 years, and they went back to to Israel or whatever they called it. Some of them had proof of what tribe they belonged to and some of them didn't. And the ones who had proof were accepted right away, but the other ones had to come up with some proof that they were mm -hmm. of certain tribes. So they, they had some way of, of doing it. I've wondered too, there've been artists through the centuries and, but there doesn't seem to be any paintings of Mary or Jesus uh -huh. until the, Europe when they when they artists were were doing like the Last Supper and Mary and the baby and of course they're always shown as white people because yeah. we are European or white so therefore everybody thinks that we think that Jesus was white and he wasn't um, he was probably quite dark quite dark uh, and it's always a surprise to someone that says to me, you know, well, you, uh, and I say, oh, no, we know that, you know, from that, yeah. if he came from that area of the world, is he had to be a person of color. And that kind of knocks them off their pins a little. Yeah. He was the right thing would have been, he would have really had a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about a miracle. <laughs> they would they would have really questioned who his father was, wouldn't they? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it would have been a much tougher sell. <laughs> if he'd been blonde hair and blue eyed, that would have changed everything. I thought it was tough the first time. Oh my goodness. I'm looking for something here before we move on. I, I don't I want to give the right. Abraham would have had a problem except at that point. They knew that Messiah was a Jew. They were getting over Jew. If he didn't show up, Shiloh didn't show up soon. Daniel 70 weeks. Yeah. And so they were looking. People were looking for the birth. The young women were hoping they might be the one. So Mary might not have been as startled as we think. Yeah, good point. That was a heightened, at that particular time, expectation. I'm trying to find the name of the artist. Um, I hate to show it, not re not 
Let me give you attributions. So uh, I want to say her name is Rebecca. Anyway, there is a, and I, I will I will post the, um, I'll post the attribution on the web on the Facebook page. There is a. Uh, one of the Advent devotions I've been using this year is called Honest Advent, and it's written by an artist, and so it includes a lot of illustrations. And one of the early illustrations that he points out is a is a painting that I had never heard of or seen before. Um, the title of it is Mary Greets Eve. And the narrative, uh, a couple of things that they point out about the about this painting is painted by a, a Cistercian nun. Um, the, a couple of things they point out in the poignancy, and if you look at the image, you can see these things, that Mary is approaching Eve, recognizing a couple of things. First, and I thought this was just really powerful, they both lost their first son to tragic circumstances, to sin. You know, Eve and Mary both. Eve could have been aware that she brought that sin, that she was part of that sin coming into the world, and her her firstborn son was lost to sin. And the despair that she might might have felt in that, the the painting suggests that Mary is comforting Eve and saying, Now I've brought into the world the Savior for that sin. So it's the coming together of and Eve's hand is on Mary's womb, and I mean, it's just, it's really a, a and you can Google it, it's just Mary greets Eve, um, but it's an interesting observation that, you know, the we don't, it's not scriptural, we don't have any account of Mary and Eve touching each other, so it's a, it's the idea that the connection there, they, they both, and, and of course we know that, that if they're historically accurate, individuals if that we we hold our identity you know it's not like mary no longer is mary and eve is no longer eve they will greet each other at some point maybe they already have i don't know all the answers to that but um just the idea that they that they come together in that um the redemption and i think the the for me anyway i guess mainly because i'm a man um it gave me an opportunity to think about the the motherhood aspect of it and thinking, wow, they both lost their first son, and and how that would right, you know, kind of like we we think about Mary and Elizabeth. Anyway, an interesting, an interesting aside. You're talking about first sons, but um, the first very first question in the Bible in Genesis, God asked Adam, what, you know, "Where are you?" <laughs> the very first question. In the New Testament, I'm Nazareth, and where is the Savior? Yeah. Who is the first Adam? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is the second, second Adam? Is, is Christ. Yeah. Where is the Savior? He was, he was, he was, yeah. 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 Interesting. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Um, I do want to look at Mary's songs very quickly because I think it's a beautiful, I think it's just a beautiful prayer. And and Jeff brought it up, so we have to go there now. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> you you made it take, took longer. <laughs> um, so I'm in verse 46 now, Luke chapter 1. Um, and Mary said, and this is her response to Elizabeth, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arms, he, with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and returned home. What do you think?
Well, like I said, I, she knows more here than we heard. Uh -huh. And being a woman, she probably wouldn't be all that familiar with the scriptures. So yeah, she wasn't allowed in there when they were talking about it. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the fact that she's young. Yeah. I mean, this is a well, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Good point. She was a literary student, something like that. But this is a teenage girl. Yeah. This is a young girl. She comes out with it. Yeah. I was a teenage girl. I wasn't writing this kind of stuff. <laughs> hey, really? Do we right have now. any idea what well, time frame she wrote this, or when she said this? It would have been in the first three months, because she went and visited Elizabeth, Elizabeth at the beginning. So would she she write it? Elizabeth. So she yeah. it was prophetic then. I, 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 prophetic in the sense of truth telling. Yes, I don't know that it's predictive. I, yeah. I think it's it, it's. Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I'm I'm not a, an expert on that. I don't know that I would call it prophetic. I I would call it a revelation. Um, but but I think the, for me when I when I read it, I'm I'm taken directly to the Psalms that this is something that David could have written. Yeah. And again. How powerfully different is that for this teenage girl to be saying powerful things that the mighty one has been, um, you know, it's, it's fine for a king to say the Lord is using me to to defeat his enemies, but Mary? <laughs> so we can blame this more on the Holy Spirit um, being prophetic. I I don't know. It's a realization, I think, more than anything. I mean, it, it's something that profound and monumental happened to anybody who is you yeah know, i am blessed and, and the people are going to see that I she's think talking times, about things in the future though in yeah. times of prayer when we go into thanksgiving during our times of prayer that that's when i feel this would have come out mm -hmm. so beautifully yeah mm -hmm. and 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 dick i think it's more um if if you <laughs> It's. It, I don't think there's a, that it's necessarily wrong to consider it a prediction, but I think it's. It is a fulfillment in Mary at this time. Mm -hmm. um, it it speaks of the present tense is, as being. My soul glorifies the Lord. He has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. The mighty one has done great things for me. His mercy extends to those who fear him. So I, I feel like it's it's more of a Mary giving us a, sh a, a tiny glimpse into the truth that she's beginning to know that we're going to that we are going to um, you know that that the the entire Christian world is going to to hear and and try to understand um, second person. This is the first hand account. Um, but I think it is as you said, Jen. It, it's a very personal glimpse that we get. Um, well, I go back to the Holy Spirit hovering over her. Yeah. yeah. The Word of God inside yeah. of her. Yes. Yeah. 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 The Spirit is over her. I can see God. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I think it's... I'm going back to the angel, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, it is an expression of a truth that's within her um, as much as anything. It, it, mm -hmm. It's the, trying to put into words what can't be described. Um, he would certainly know that this was very, very special, but at the same time, she didn't know the whole story of what was going to happen. Right. Uh, I think of the song, and I can't, I can't believe it, uh, who wrote it, wrote it, was Mary, do you know? Did yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mary, did you know your baby boy would? Yeah. So on and so yeah. forth. It was years ago, I uh, read a poem by Georgie Starbuck, Bill Brett, and it started out uh, with this little boy uh, growing up, uh, and he would watch spiders uh, web and so on and so on and so forth. And the punchline at the end was, and I weep for Judas, weep for my son. Huh. And the fact that he grew up probably as a very normal little boy, nobody yeah. saw anything different, and yet he turned out the opposite of Jesus. Yeah. But I, I think too this is a as much as a, a revelation, it is important that it that it is tied to the history of Israel. You know, the concluding line, Abraham and his descendants, even as he said to our fathers. Uh, this is um I, I think if you had to put a time on it, it's as much of Mary looking back at God's hand on his people 
and Mary recognizing that she is a part of that work of salvation um, as anything else. But it, it's, yeah, for her to, and let's face it, we have a record of something a woman said at that time. <laughs> it's, we only are reading this because God wanted us to, because culturally, this probably would have made, it, would have made the front page of the Jerusalem <laughs> Times. <laughs> Yes, it, Although it brushes part of the chosen that we saw last year in theaters at the Christmas is Mary's older, and she keeps saying to people, "You've got to tell this to Luke. Mm. Tell him. People should know. The world must know. People yeah, should know. Yeah. Is it, she, tell him I said this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. yeah, he needs, I hear he's writing this. Yeah. And it really touched me. They put this together. I mean, the way the chosen thinks. Yeah. Of things mm -hmm. around the edges of scripture is really fascinating. So I thought that was kind of neat. You wonder how Luke got the stuff sometimes. Right. Yeah. And and I think it's I, I think it's important to to realize that our cooperation, you know, God uses people to communicate His will. It, it's mm -hmm. you know this is if we didn't receive golden tablets that were dug hidden in the ground. We th these are these are personal <laughs> accounts. <laughs> You had to do that. I know. Um, You're right. But, <laughs> I know. Uh, but but it's clear that that there's an awareness of God working. It's clear that there is, uh, and that God that that God's aware of of who Mary is as well, and that and that Mary can say this is valuable, this is important, this is life changing, and share that story. And as with with we ask what stories get kept, and if you look at it from a, just from an editorial perspective, what what was repeated was what was understood to be powerful and true. It, it, it's it, Mary had this experience, and at whatever level, the questions were not, is this historically accurate? The questions were more. First, first person account. You talk to somebody. You know if what they're telling you is a real experience, not just a story about somebody else. The the personal passing on and sharing, telling the story. As you said, Jeff, how do we know who the who the tribes are? Someone has to can had repeated that history and and repeated that narrative, and the important parts of it. God helped us preserve. But there's also the value of transmitting it to the next generation, to continue to look at the story, to continue to hear and to understand that there's something powerful going on here that we might not ever understand all of it, um, but we will never be completely in the dark either. Anything else about Mary before we jump to Joseph? I'm going to answer one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you can see that we how did Luke all know all these things, but the very beginning of the talk um, verse 1, Luke is talking to Theophilus. He's saying that he got these things under eyewitness wonder. Yeah, yeah, no, I did know that. that. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I think what he did was that if there was somebody still alive, they knew it, or somebody, you know, that, that he went to them first. Mm -hmm. Which is why some of the things aren't in Luke that are in some of the other ones, they wouldn't just didn't verify him. Yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. very interesting. That's why I like that the Chosen did that, because it was like she was telling someone to go tell him. She was saying, here, tell him this. I don't know where he is, but I hear he's writing this. Tell him. Yeah. Yes. I wonder if he interviewed her. That would be interesting. Yeah. I know. I do. I do wonder that. Well, she, I don't know how long she lived. I've always been curious about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know their traditions, but there's no parallel Well, we are we are aware also that um, you know Mary has had a growing understanding of the impact and the import of her pregnancy. It's so what she what we have is is what we need to know. But probably it was it was revealed and experienced by her in in, in a different way. We get a, a condensed. You know, I can't imagine what it would be like knowing that you're that you're bringing the Son of God and the Savior of a nation and the world in into childhood. I mean, when you're potty training Jesus, what do you 
you know, I mean, it, 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 that is kind of vulgar, but in, but in a very real sense, God with us was a man that had to be potty trained when he was a baby. You know, he, he didn't. Talk and it's fun. Right. Normal days, you know. Right. Wasn't all just but, and I think <laughs> for me, that reinforces the importance of us keeping Christ accessible to everyday people. I, 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 I bristle with the ideas of of the high priestly that not that there's anything wrong in the high liturgies but for me that gets in the way of the jesus who was potty trained and took his first step and for me the incarnation has its greatest value in god showed up here in a life in a way that i could understand and and was a human being in the same way i'm a human being he didn't do the sin. He didn't commit the sins that I did in middle school. But I'm pretty sure that he was a middle school kid. You know, he, mm-hmm. all of those things, make his offer to us to come to him accessible. I don't know that I can ex- access, as you were describing, uh, Jeff, the high holy priest, in, into the altar of the holy of holies. I, the holy of holies doesn't feel accessible to me. Um, Jesus, who was born in a regular family, does feel accessible to me. And and for the purpose of relationship, I think that matters. And she knew she knew he was special. She probably, as he was growing up, there wasn't anything said about it or, or whatever. But at the marriage of Cana, she's the one that said, do what he yeah. said, tells you yeah. to do. Yeah, listen so to she him. She knew he had a, He knows what he's talking about. about. Yeah, mm-hmm. but there's nothing before that that shows that he had done any miracles or shown yeah. Shown that part. Of that. She well, had in the temple. Four children after him. Was, yeah. So she oh, was very So the, the rabbis and, were astounded yeah. by him. So did you ever? Did you ever wonder if part of that interchange where he where he says, "Why are you bothering me now, Mom?" If that isn't just another way of reminding us that he was fully human. You know, he's at this level like, okay, it's Mom. They, she tells him to do something about it, and he's like, "Come on." <laughs> why, are you, why are you bothering me with that right now? I mean, and, and yet he, he chooses to do it. Um, yes, the wedding feast of Cana in Galilee and John. But being the son of a carpenter, I bet you he could add. <laughs> That's the one thing you said. You think, yeah, I just read. He was probably pretty good at math. I'd have to agree. Yes, I, I carpentry is still a, a conundrum to me. So it's, a, it's one of those great mysteries that I'll never understand. You measure twice. Yeah. Cut once. So I need. Yeah, to I know. always think of that after I cut. Yeah. Cut it twice and it's still too short. Yeah, I, I, I measure. I don't measure. Cut. Don't measure. Cut. Measure and then cut too much. I need three times as much product as I would. Um, so let's take just a moment to talk about Joseph. I just want to point out we spent 45 minutes on the mom and five minutes on the dad. I think that's appropriate. Um, we do have more scripture about. We do, and 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 I I I don't want to, I don't want to be. I don't want to put people in in um, restriction with with gender roles. However. I think that there is a genuine reality that Mary and Elizabeth may have had a lot more to say and more articulate about their experience than Joseph did about his. I, I, I think it is kind of natural that we would see the father as having an experience, but not quite as much as, as the experience, largely because as having, having been married to somebody who had a baby, I know that the experience that Lynn had with those pregnancies was bigger than mine, <laughs> as much as I experienced yes. in, in every way, and 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 just recognizing that that's the truth. And so, so we do get a little bit less about Joseph, but he's important in this mm-hmm. because if he didn't throw into it, if he didn't buy into this plan, things would have been way different. Um, so I'll read this for 18 to 25 very quickly. This is how the, this is Matthew chapter one, for those of you who are online with us. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. 
Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The naming is big in this. Yeah. Because the, the, the message says, um, she will bring a son to, to birth, and when she does, you, Joseph, will, be, will name him Jesus. Yeah. I, I never got that whole importance the value. from the naming. You know? well, that's, what, that's what anybody gets with the best side of it. Yeah, yeah. Mary's aware of the plan, and and but Joseph has, as you said, a very important piece of this to keep the, because a the 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 prophecy is includes this lineage, and and Joseph has to make that make that naming move, or it or it doesn't all work the way God said it was going to work, and. And I, I think the, but I, I like the fact that they both, they're both aware. Their roles are different, but they're both aware of what's going on. You know, Mary obviously has more, greater insight than Joseph because she's carrying the child, but. Um, Beautiful aspect of God that comes to me through Joseph and the way, what we see about him is how he makes sure that we know. He, he puts our hearts and our fears to rest through the dream. Like he makes sure Joseph knows. Yeah. You, know, you do this, marry her, and then again, it makes sure it, you take him to Egypt, and he does it, and he just yeah. he protects the way God talks to people and makes sure they're clear. Like we say, God, I can't figure out what you want me to do. I feel like when I first started studying the Bible, I thought I, he is trying to make it clear. If he yeah. needs us to be clear, he makes it clear to us. We have to be. I mean, these people were amazing, obedient servants, Mary and Joseph, but it just touches me that God does, doesn't let them flounder, doesn't yeah. let this guy flounder, you know, yeah. he just reaches down and makes sure he has peace about this, yeah. you know. Yeah, and, and, and connects him with the big picture. He's going to save his people from their sins. You know, this is not just about the Immaculate Conception. This is also about the redemption of um, his people, like, and, which would also be... be <laughs> yeah. I promise you, this is all going to yeah. be so worth it. Going through this. John came from a priestly line, but Jesus was not. He was just a common person. Right. Yeah, he was a regular, regular guy. But we're at eleven fifty-six. Sorry, Tom. I don't know if Tom Tide signed on. But Good job. Jim. Tell him to mind his own. Good thank job. you, Jennifer. <laughs> Tell him to mind his own business if he complains about it. <laughs> Any final comments before we close in prayer? Okay, James Kaplan, uh, interesting that Jonathan, or Jochanan, John, was in the Old Testament, John was always, John, the name of John was always a servant of the king. He was a servant of the king, or like he was a high king of the king, but always serving the king. Where Yeshua is the name of Jesus, that God's salvation, that He is the King. So John comes serving the King. I think that their names actually fit the story. Yeah. 
And, and yeah. Tommy's a friend of God, I believe. Beloved of God. Is this one? Yeah. Interesting. Anyone else? Jeff, do you have enough voice to close us with prayer? Oh, sure, I can do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful to be able to gather here together and to study your word and to to be awed by the miracle, the miracle and the mystery of, of you coming down to live with us and to show us and to die for us, ultimately. And we're just grateful for you, for all this. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Here is the computer broke. Oh, no. And that's why she wasn't, she had no online presence yesterday. Yes, I ran into her in the parking lot. That's why I was so late. I told her brother, David, I said, where's your sister? She's not on. She had no way to get on.